This is Skeletor. He is a gorgeous horse with a huge personality. But he didn't always look like this. I have a knack for finding horses in unfortunate situations and when I see one that looks like Skeletor, I like to bring them home and fix them up. Skeletor's rehab was fairly uncomplicated and in about a year he was looking like a completely different horse. After I have a horse like Skeletor refed and looking healthy, he gets to join the rest of the horses out in the herd. When I turned Skeletor out this fall with the rest of the geldings, I noticed one day that he had a very slight limp. He has some pretty crazy moves, so it wasn't surprising that he tweaked something playing out in the pasture with the other horses. I gave him a thorough once over and after a while it looked like he was back to normal. As I continued his training he was full of his regular shenanigans so I knew he must be feeling better. As time went on however I noticed some days he would still have a very very slight abnormality to his gait. He did have an abnormal piece of muscle in his hip and I decided to haul him to the vet just to have it looked at. After a lameness exam and some x-rays we found a few interesting things. Skeletor still had some growth plates open and he also had an incomplete fibula. While it is a little bit abnormal to be incomplete, Horses have evolved over time to actually not even need the use of their fibula, so it is a non-weight bearing bone in modern horses. Since we did not find any other definitive answer, we assumed the muscle atrophy was the main source of his lameness. After some stall rest and some anti-inflammatories, he was looking completely sound. I continued to get him legged back up so I could start in on some more training with him. But over time, I noticed that his lameness was not going away. It would come back after a rambunctious session of playtime with his horse friends. I decided to give him more time on stall rest while I waited for a lameness specialist to have an opening for us. It can be pretty tricky to haul a horse to a vet a long distance in Montana winter. But finally, two months after his initial vet visit, we got an opening to see the specialist. Even though it is springtime in Montana, a lot of the mountain passes were covered with snow and ice still, which made driving a little bit nerve wracking. But after about four hours on the road, Huckleberry and I could finally see the mountains that we were heading for. One thing about driving this long to go to the vet is there is no shortage of picturesque scenery. Due to a misunderstanding of the map, I did end up taking a particularly scenic route most of the way. Huckleberry did seem to be growing tired of all of the time in the truck. He typically loves car rides and he was a little bit confused about where exactly we were heading to today. During our final push, we saw this little makeshift landing strip in the middle of nowhere. I only passed about half a dozen cars going down this road, so it was pretty interesting to see that. I had been driving the majority of the day, and with the sun going down, we entered the most treacherous part of the drive. I had no plans of hitting any wildlife along our journey and I was really happy that we didn't encounter any by the time we got to the vet's office. Since we were so far away from home, there are some overnight stalls at the vet's office that we were able to use. I also needed to walk Huckleberry quite a bit to get a few of the kinks out. The older he gets, the harder time he has coming on these really long road trips with me. I was really happy to see that Skeletor settled into his accommodations for the night really well. He took a few moments to sniff around and see if there were any horses nearby. I am really lucky that I hauled Skeletor all last summer to different places here and there so he is quite comfortable in new places. He did get a little bit dirty on the ride so I'll have to groom him before his vet appointment tomorrow. 
even though he did have free choice hay all the way up here, I did give him some fresh hay for the overnight. He seemed like he was settling down pretty well, and I had a special stop I was going to make this evening before I found my accommodations. I went to a friend's house and visited a horse that I had rehabbed a few years ago. He was looking really, really good. I also got to meet a few of the Mustangs that she had. I couldn't believe how much this one looked like my Stewie horse. He was also really outgoing and snuggly and they're about the exact same size. This guy is a full Mustang though. He is branded from the BLM. His brand was a little bit hard to see since he had his winter hair, but there it is. I also got to meet this handsome guy. He is another BLM Mustang. He was a little bit more suspicious of what exactly I was doing. He had some stranger danger. After a little bit of a sleepless night, I was up bright and early to go check on Skeletor and feed him his breakfast. There were not very many other horses at the vet clinic and I was surprised that Skeletor was so calm. He did drink a lot of water overnight and ate the majority of his hay. To make sure he stays on the same schedule, I gave him his breakfast as normal. It was a little bit colder here than it has been at home. You can actually see our breath a little bit. I topped off his water for the day and went to the trailer to get some grooming supplies so I could spruce him up for the vet later. He is relatively clean, but he should be super clean if we're going to be doing a lot of diagnostic tests on him. After he had eaten his breakfast and gotten all spruced up for the day, I felt okay leaving him. Our appointment wasn't until lunchtime, so I did have time to run out and get myself some breakfast. For as long as he was in the trailer yesterday, he seemed to be in pretty good spirits this morning. I fixed him up with another fresh bag of hay. I think he was getting a little bit bored of standing in his stall, but it's a really good size. They gave me some ideas for when I build my own place. I think Skeletor was bummed I wasn't taking him anywhere this morning, but he seemed really settled in his environment, so I felt okay leaving him for a few hours until our appointment. I went into town and had breakfast, and Huckleberry took a nice long nap in the truck. And before I knew it, it was time for Skeletor to be seen by the vet. Since he had already had some x-rays done at the other vet's office, we were able to start right in with some ultrasounds. The doc did take a look at his previous x-rays just to make sure there wasn't anything suspicious. Just to get you guys up to speed, an ultrasound uses sound waves to detect different tissues inside the body. They are very commonly used in humans to check the growth of a child. The transducer will project some sound waves. If the sound waves hit anything, they bounce back and are able to produce a picture. Areas that show up really dark or black on the ultrasound are where the sound waves have gone right through, so that would be empty space. We checked Skeletor's stifle first. The meniscus, which is right there, looks good. There's no fluid in the joints. I don't see any spurs on the tibia and the femur. That looks completely normal. This, this atrophied area, I can really get to see too much there. You're well behind the greater trochanter mm -hmm. of the femur, where that atrophy is. So that's all kind of in soft tissue mm -hmm. of this. You know, that's got nothing to do with the bone. After the vet cleared his stifle, his hip, and also that area of atrophy, we decided the next course of action would be to check his tendons. Even though Skeletor was already sedated for this, he was a little bit wiggly. Because he was squirming a little bit too much, we decided to give him a little bit more drugs and let them simmer so we could safely get the images that we needed. This is a tricky area to ultrasound, so it's always better to have the vet stay safe. And after a few minutes, it became evident where his problem was. You see, it's, you've got that, you know, you've got a pretty big 
um, black hole in there, emanating really from the origin down. This is the ligament, but you've got the black center. I mean, that's a pretty good size core. That's that's a pretty good size. And you see that decreased density mm -hmm. in the center? Let's take a couple x-rays of the hawk. Mm -hmm. I'm going to break it down for you guys, so hopefully you'll understand what's going on with Skeletor. They have a giant ligament that runs down the back of their leg. Skeletor's has quite a big lesion in the proximal region, which is up near the top. That big black hole is the center or core of his ligament, and that is really abnormal. Here is an example of a normal ligament next to a cross section of an abnormal one. Very simply, ligaments are made up of giant bundles of little rubber band-like material. This material gives the ligaments their stretch. Under normal circumstances, they work quite well, but as the horse ages or they compete in really high performance sports, these ligaments can break. These individual fibers can break from jumping around like Skeletor does quite often. I have rehabbed a lot of tendon and ligament injuries in the past and they take months or years, not weeks. Typically, they require a lot of wrapping and bandaging. Many people like to use poultice to try and increase the blood flow to the area and speed up healing. Cold hosing is often used to try and cool down the initial injury. These injuries can take a very long time to heal and the chance of the injury happening again are increased. The stretchy fibers usually do not grow back normal and there is a bit of scar tissue. Some people like to use special supplements to help with healing. The area in which Skeletor's injury is does have some nerve complications that come with it. As the ligament heals, it can put more pressure on the surrounding sheath and that requires surgery to have the best outcome. We did go ahead and take some x-rays of his hawks because we hadn't had them done at the other vet's office. With our visit pretty much over, I put Skeletor back in his pen while he woke up. We are heading home today and he needs to be fully awake so he can balance on the trailer. When we were pretty much ready to go, I got stopped and said I needed to review the x-rays with the doctor. I have worked with enough vets to know that unless there's something wrong with the x-rays, usually they don't get reviewed. So I am a little bit worried about what's going on with Skeletor now. He is four years old, so that's pretty young to have problems going on with the hawks. A horse's hawk is very similar to our ankle joint. It is actually not one joint at all, but four separate joints. The main one is responsible for the majority of movement within that joint. There are three smaller joints which account for the rest of the movement, with the two bottom joints having the least amount of movement in the joint. This is a fairly normal hock joint, and this is the radiograph we got of Skeletor. When you get a closer look, you can see that there are some significant abnormalities that we found. Circled in red is a little bit of a chip and a hook on one of his joint spaces. And circled in blue is some active arthritis. These would be fairly common if he was a middle-aged sport horse, but he is a horse that hasn't even been started under saddle yet. There was also an abnormal spot in the joint space of that lower joint. In a horse his age, there should be a definitive black line where the joint space is. Because Skeletor has multiple problems going on, we discussed a few options for his future. My hopes of bringing him along as a high level dressage or eventing horse are pretty much zero. But it is very possible that if I can get his tendon healed up and under control, and provide him with the proper amount of maintenance to make sure the arthritis in his hocks doesn't progress quickly, then I'll actually be able to ride him one day. 
since Skeletor has been dealing with this injury for quite some time, it may take a little bit longer to heal. The problems that he has with his hawk is something that would have shown up on a pre-purchase exam had I gotten him from the breeder or a bigger, Daddy. more reputable sale. That's a silly place to put your head. It is very common for a horse like Skeletor now. to end up at a lower end sale when they can't pass a pre-purchase exam. It is very likely that Skeletor is a registered warm blood and his papers just never went with him to the sale. Instead of being worth twenty or thirty thousand dollars with clean x-rays and his papers, Skeletor was worth two hundred and fifty dollars when I purchased him from the sale in Montana. I think it's really important for regular viewers of my channel to understand that I realize the amount of money these horses can cost after the sale. They can be an extremely risky purchase for someone that has very little experience working with this kind of horse. When we were about halfway Hi, home, bud. Skeletor was starting to get a little bit antsy from being in the trailer so long. Huckleberry had also grown pretty tired of the 12 hour concert that I had subjected him to over the last couple of days. When we finally got home, the weather was so nice. All of the snow had melted and everything had started to dry up. I usually do not let my horses do this, but I wasn't really paying attention and Skeletor decided to unload himself. You can see the little bald patches he had to get shaved to do all the ultrasounds. I could tell right away that Skeletor was really happy to be home in a familiar place. Tiny was happy to see me for about one second and then she played keep away for the rest of the night. Skeletor did spend a few days recovering. I am so glad I took that window of nice weather to go see the vet because we had a blizzard the very next day. With Skeletor's diagnosis, I am probably going to have to change around my plans for the spring and summer. Even though he will basically be just hanging out for a year, not doing hardly anything at all, there is a level of maintenance that is required. I have a special protocol when dealing with ligament and tendon injuries that takes up a, quite a bit of time. Oh I think I might have to move him over to my quarantine facility so he's able to stay calm enough to not run around and keep re-injuring that ligament. Most people would look at Skeletor's ligament and hawk issues and feel completely crushed. When I got home, I was feeling really grateful that I would probably still be able to ride him one day. I was also really happy that when I asked the vet about possible euthanasia, he told me Skeletor could live with both of these conditions all of his life. He will of course need extra maintenance and there may come a time where he needs regular pain meds, but this condition is no reason to euthanize him. Since it was suggested by the other vet he saw, I was really relieved to hear that. I also have a feeling that a lot of you Skeletor fans out there are relieved as well. Thank you guys so much for watching and stay tuned for the next video.